Right, hello everyone. For this segment of the module, we'll be looking at sympatric speciation. So just a few reminders. Speciation is where new species emerge through gradual changes in their biology. Um, so uh, the evolutionary process will result in the formation of new species from old forms. So there are a couple of types of speciation. There's one where gradual changes in a population over time will lead to a modern form being genetically different to an ancestral form to the point where if you took an individual back in time, they would not recognize each other as the same species. But the, the form that we'll be looking at today is where multiple species form from a single common ancestor. Now, thinking back to earlier in the module, you will have learned about allopatric speciation, which is where geographic separation, such as a mountain or a, uh, a, a bay or even climatic differences, they result in the formation of new species. So now we're going to look at sympatric speciation. And this is speciation that occurs in the same geographic area. So where multiple populations of the same species existing in the same space uh, are placed under different evolutionary pressures, which result in them becoming different species whilst still being physically able to interact. So there's a few mechanisms of this. Some of the common ones are temporal separation, so timing, um, diet-driven natural selection, which is what you see with Darwin finches, uh, preferential sexual selection, and habitat niche utilization. So to understand what uh, sympatric speciation is, well, I'm going to look at a quick example, um, which will look at a temporal effect on speciation. So for this example, we will have a species of insect, uh, which you can see on the left, which feeds on the red flowers of a particular species of plant, uh, in this case, a cactus. The life cycle of this insect is annual and aligns with the uh, blossoming cycle of the cactus. So at the time when the insects emerge from their eggs, the cactuses have blossomed and then the insects have a ample food supply for their mating and uh, laying of eggs again. But it turns out that there is more than one cactus in the area that has red flowers. So here we have, we will refer to them as tall cactus and short cactus. So typically the insect doesn't feed on short cactus because its flowers blossom a couple of weeks after tall cactus finishes blossoming, at which point the insect has already laid all its eggs and died off. So the insect should never come into contact, typically, with the short cactus flower. One year though, a one in 1000 year event means that the tall cactus blossom lasts significantly longer and overlaps with the short cactus blossom. This means that the mating window of the insects is vastly increased, meaning that they can mate and lay eggs twice this year. Another effect is that the insect mating window op overlaps with the short cactus blossoming. And since short cactus also has red flowers, the insect is attracted to it. As a result of this, there are now two batches of eggs, each with a year long life cycle. So in the following year, things return to normal and tall and short cactus have distinct blossoming times. Now, the first batch of eggs emerges as normal one year after they were laid, um, at the same time as tall cactus blossoms. Now the second batch emerges exactly a year after it was laid, and this time though, aligning with the blossom of the short cactus. Now you have two distinct populations of insects. Neither of these um, 
emergences of insects from their eggs will overlap since by the time at the time of the first group hatching the short cactus has not blossomed yet and at the time of the second batch uh, hatching um, tall cactus has finished its blossom and that first batch of eggs has mated and laid its eggs for next year. Now over time, any number of biological forces could act on the cacti and the insects, and many changes could occur in the, both, the population, both populations of insects and also in the cactuses themselves. Since, uh, since neither population of insect is um, sharing genetic material, they will change in different ways. And it is possible that each species could also co-evolve with their cactus to the point where even at the next 1000 year event, neither population is attracted to either cactus. So you're in this example, say cactus and this insect, short cactus and this insect co-evolve and change color and tall cactus remains the same. So in this instance, you can see that within the same area, you've had the emergence of two distinct populations and two distinct species of insect, simply because of a temporal differentiation in their life cycle. So for the first however many generations, it could be 500, it could be even, even 1,000, there may, have, there may have been no change, no significant change in either population, and they would still recognize each other as the same species if they overlapped. But eventually, they would diverge just through things like random genetic drift uh, and sexual selection pressures and other, other, other evolutionary forces. So in summary, Sympatric speciation occurs in the same geographic area where individuals have the potential to encounter one another physically, but because of some other effect, uh, they don't share genetic material. So there's no mating between the populations. So there's a number of factors that could influence this. It could be timing, diet, niche utilization, and sexual selection. But whatever the factor is, even though the two populations are existing in the same space, they're not sharing with genetic material and they're not mating and so they have the, the the opportunity exists for certain effects to result in the two populations diverging genetically and eventually speciating becoming two distinct species next uh, we can move on to the readings which is on a real life example of sympatric speciation, which is the Lord Howe Island Palms. Thanks for listening.